every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. It's yours. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the day you eat it. Why? Because that's bringing sin into the world and death's coming with it. All right? Now, watch this. And the Lord God said it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam, see God's given dominion, called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave the names of all cattle and to the fowls of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. Now watch this. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. So that's where your woman come from. Made he a woman and brought her unto Adam, the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, here's something you need to notice. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay, now we're going to start where it all began. Verse 1, chapter 3. Now the serpent, we all know that wasn't no angel there. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, now remember Adam was first made, then Eve. Okay? And he said unto the woman, yea, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it, and neither shall you touch it lest you die. So see, she had a little bit of knowledge of not to do that. Whether from Adam or God, she knew that she couldn't do it. So the serpent came to her, the weaker vessel, and asked her, and said, Has God said you shall not eat of it? She answered him and said, Yea, God has said you shall not eat of every tree, and not especially the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, listen to the devil. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Now, didn't God say they would? See, he lied. For God does know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing what? Good and evil. See? And when the woman saw the tree that it was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. So you see, children, when Adam and Eve here disobeyed God, okay, what happened? According to Paul here, I could quote it, but I'll run you back here. I got it marked here. Out of this book of Romans again. Let me just rehearse it to you right here. Romans, I believe it's chapter 3 here. Or chapter 4. Let me get it here just a minute. Romans chapter 4. What Paul began to tell them here. Listen to it. Verse 12. Chapter 5, I'm sorry. 5th chapter Romans, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there's no law. Now watch this, though. Here's the law. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified, Romans 3, 20, in the sight of the God, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See there? Now, when Adam and Eve took of that tree, did they know then they were in trouble? You better believe it. And they seen then they were naked. They knew then they had done wrong. So see, God made Adam in his image and likeness. Okay? Now, Adam was made like God, which is no sin. But when that serpent beguiled Eve, and she took of the tree that God said don't eat of, and give it to Adam, well, he took of it, and then what happened? Their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. They knew they had done God wrong. So, listen to this now. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. So, that's bringing in the world. What she do? She took the fruit thereof, did eat, gave it also to her husband, and Adam did eat it too. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. But now, what happened to the next part? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now, why did they hide? Because as ashamed and they knew they were naked. Okay? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So what had happened? He knew he'd broken the commandment of God. So he hid from God. But when he heard God's voice, he was ashamed of himself because he knew he'd done wrong. And him and he both hid themselves in the garden among the trees. So what did God say to him? Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Now remember, when he took of that sin entered into the world and death came with it. But sin, Paul said, is not imputed See, not counted when there's no law. Because by the deeds of the law, nobody would be justified, but yet by the law was the knowledge of sin. See, all right, now watch this. And the man said, The woman whom thou gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Okay. Now, listen to verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, See, he didn't ask him, What have you done? He said, Because thou hast done this, you're cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Now, God never asked him what caused you to do this or what happened. He just said, Because you've done this. And that shows you right there that the devil was a liar from the beginning. You understand what I'm saying? God spoke to Adam and Eve. Because he made them in his likeness and after his image. But when he had commanded him not to eat of that tree, what happened? Adam, of course, obeyed the wife and eat of it too. She was deceived. But it was his disobedience that brought sin into the world. And what is sin? That's breaking, transgression, the law of God. Transgression Sin is the transgression of the law. See? So what he done, he broke the command of God. And that was disobedience. And that brought sin into the world and death came with it. But sin wasn't counted because there was no law revealed to him at that time. To be honest with you now, when he made them, he put the law of, of God in there to, for them to obey. But 
Their choice was to eat what God said don't eat of. Now Adam knew better. Okay, but watch this right quick. So, what happened now? And the Lord God told the serpent, watch this, because you've done this, you're cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go. Didn't say crawl. And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And of course, there's no doubt that that was prophecy of the coming of Christ and all and Jesus having to give his life. But what did God say to Eve here? And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou eat or shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And Adam, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened, see, unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life, and God said, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust you are, and unto dust shall you return. See, death came when sin entered into the world with it. And children, to this day, still the wages of sin is death. But thank God the gift of God is eternal life with Jesus our Lord. So what we're showing you here, that the law was right and holy. But there was no knowledge of sin until the law came. And by the time the law came through Moses then people were convicted after the law came and they knew they were sinners so God had given them uh, Moses and the prophets and so forth and the law become the schoolmaster to them. But they were so weak because of their flesh they couldn't keep it. So what was God going to do? He was going to give His life. And now we can eat the tree of life and be formed right back in like God intended at the beginning and have Christ in our lives, children. And that's why that if you're in Christ, you become a new creature, and these old things pass away and everything becomes new, but still you're forbidden to eat the wrong. The world is your enemy. And Jesus said every tree is known by his own fruit. Either make it good or corrupt, you can't have them both. So see what I'm trying to show you? This tree of knowledge of good and evil meant just exactly what it said, knowledge of good and evil. And if you remember, the Lord even said, man's become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, the devil used the word that God told Adam and seduced Eve. Now, Paul told the church, if you go read the second book of Corinthians 11 chapter, Paul said, I've espoused you to one husband to the church, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds would be corrupted from the simplicity that was in Christ. So see, the devil could work in deceivings. He could work in unrighteousness now because man had disobeyed God. And children, the law helped the people until Christ come. And now, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are free from that law. And even Christ into the law, now you've got the righteousness of Jesus in you. So, there's something though I want to show you right quick out of this book of Romans. There's a lot that goes with it. <coughs> and I'll try to get more into it, but I want to show you right now about the obedient part of serving the Lord. But let me show you something here now. Uh, in the... I believe it's the fifth chapter of the book of Romans here, but listen to me a minute. People are being taught by churches that now that Christ has become a righteousness and we've put Jesus Christ on us and He ended the law, you know, and now gives us His righteousness, that we can live any way we want to. They call it 
uh, you can't live in this flesh without sin. So they've got it once in grace always now that don't matter really how you live, as long as you accepted Jesus as your Lord, Christ's righteousness saved you. See? So sin ain't got no big deal on you if you do or don't. Now that's the way the devil works. He's hiding the minds of people again and beguiling them. Because we do have to be holy as He's holy, and we do have to obey the Spirit now. You can't just uh, go on into sin because you maybe was delivered from sin. And now Christ is in you that you can live what you want to. That don't work with Him. And I'll show you this in just a moment, but watch this now. Let me just read you a little bit out of the fifth chapter. Read it all when you get time, but verse 17. For if by one man's offense, see, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So see, we do put his righteousness on, but I'm going to show you that don't give you a right to just sin because he give you his. That don't work. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, that was Adam, Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, here it is, the law entered. Now remember, by the knowledge of the law is sin known. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Okay? That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So now we need the tree of life. Okay, but here's something to notice. Verse 1 of chapter 6. What shall we say to them? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, that's a lot of people have been taught that once in grace always, you can see and do what you want to. But Paul asked the question, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Here's his answer. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Listen to that. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now, listen to this. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. All right. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's why God don't want you living an unclean life. Once you profess Christ, He said, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now watch this. For if we've been planted, that's your new birth, together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. He's done risen. Knowing this, that our what old man, that's you, your old man, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So that's why he washed us from our sins. For he that is dead is freed from sin. See there? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. You ready? Knowing in that he died, he died unto sin once. He ain't going to do it no more. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, watch this next verse. <clears throat> let not, let not, see, sin... Therefore, reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So what happens? 
If lust can conceive, it'll bring forth sin, and then sin, when it's through, will destroy you. So we don't need to let it rule in us. That's why He gave us of His Spirit. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? For you're not under the law. See? The law was the knowledge of sin and let everybody know you're dead. You're lost. He's weak through the flesh. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law? No. The answer was God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or obedience unto Righteousness. So see, children, just because Jesus paid it all don't mean that we can accept Him and then go out here and live any way we want to. If sin enters back into you, it'll bring forth death. And the Bible said here, watch this. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin... Here it is. You became the servants of righteousness. And Paul said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded yourselves members servants to uncleanness, to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto righteousness. So see this whole chapter here of Romans tells you the whole evidence of helping you live for God. Okay, now, I'm going to have to stop here just a minute on this part. But, verse 23 said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, children, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's why that we need to mortify through the Spirit. It'll help us, the deeds of our body. We need to shun all appearances of evil, and avoid things that hurt your relation with the Lord. Even Paul found one church at Corinth, if you remember. Fornication was among them. One having his father's wife, and of course, Paul let them know, get rid of that. It don't need to be in a church. And children, this is what I'm saying. There's a lot of things happening. But one thing is for certain, when you get born of God, you do become a new creature. And we do get to partake of that tree of life. Now, I'll have to get more into that tree of knowledge of good and evil in our next program or two, but what I want you to definitely understand that Jesus revealed the devil and his works to you now through the New Testament. And let us know that we have the victory over him and all the powers of the enemy by yielding our life to the Lord. And I'm going to read you some things here to help you out in case you're lost. Or maybe you're a member of a church, but you just don't feel like you're a Christian and you're really serving the Lord. Well, I want you to know something. There is spirits out here that deceives us and seduces if we're not careful. But there's one thing that I plead to every one of us to recognize. There is no Bible that tells me I can be a Christian because I put my name on a book of of churches or I wrote my name on somebody's baptismal record. Now, baptism is right. But children, you must be born of the Spirit of God before you can be right with Him. I'm sorry, they teaching you that you get saved and then come back and get the Holy Ghost. There ain't a bit of Bible for that. You get all of this when you turn your heart to the Lord and repent and so forth. And even Jesus told them to repent and believe the gospel. That's what brings baptism of the Spirit to you. See, he that believeth and is baptized, that's natural. Believing it in the water baptism, you believe it and is baptized, will be saved. So salvation is a free gift that God gives us. Now, turn with me, if you will, right quick to the book of Acts. And... A lot of churches won't teach you in this pulpit and when they do, they leave out the most important part. But I want you to go with me to Acts chapter 2 and if you remember this is after the Holy Ghost had fallen and they'd begin to believe them. Well, if you'll go to uh, verse 36 and listen to old Peter a minute. 
Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, not another one, whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now watch this. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now they were wanting to know to be saved. Now read your Bible here, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. That's in water. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and thank God you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Honey, this is a promise to you, your children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God call. And if you'll read the rest of that book, Acts, he said, they that gladly received Peter's word were baptized and the same day the Lord added 3,000 souls. Now children, as I'm closing, give earnest heed to these things because I believe it without a doubt we're running out of time and God's bringing His people to that unity of the faith so we can go out here without a spot and a blemish. God will get him a bride ready. So we appreciate you. Write us in any prayer requests. Come out and be with us sometime. And we thank God. Get on our website. It shows you some good programs and articles and so forth. And our schedules where we're going to be and all this and that. So God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.